Hello, everyone, and welcome to DN Digital's Starships and Scoundrels campaign. My name is Dave, and I'll be your game master. We're using the Star Wars 5e system to tell the story of a crew of a smuggling freighter known as the Mayday set about a year after the fall of the Jedi Order. Each session is going to be going live on Wednesdays around 3 p.m. Pacific time, so make sure to subscribe, click that bell, do all those YouTube things, and tune back in next week for more action. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. Last time on Starships and Scoundrels, Moff Renz's Imperial troops managed to barely escape from the crew of the Mayday, forcing the crew to flee from an oncoming flood. The crew further inspected the salvaged data in hopes of finding an ultimate cure, but all signs pointed to only one solution, that they must pursue the Imperials to the hidden Isen Corona station in order to save their companions, and possibly the galaxy. We return now to the crew of the Mayday as you all travel through the peaceful hum of hyperspace. Um, just a reminder, your ship actually has eight private rooms on board. Um, each of you has your own space. Lynn and Huntail are using the two open rooms, and then Alo and Vexa have been holed up in Alo's room basically since you got back on board the Mayday. Uh, and based on your calculations, you have about a day worth of travel um, before you actually will reach uh, the Ison system. Um, is there anything that you all want to do uh, in the downtime on your way there? H4 would go to R5's quarters. He'd bump up against the, the wall like he does when he's trying to knock. Yep, I'll open the door. However, droids can open doors. Hello, R5. Do you mind if I come in for a moment? Uh, sure. Go ahead. I mean, what's up? I just wanted to talk to you before we go to this ice in Corona place. I don't quite know what this is, but it seems dangerous and we seem pretty stupid. So we might die there. It's, yeah, considering we know basically nothing about the place, it's, we're getting it over our heads. Also, it, you sound a little different. Yes, well, my, I haven't leaned on this bit very often, but my voice changes a lot. It's been a while since I've used this one. I just wanted to ask if you could do me a favor. If I were to be somehow destroyed, I trust that you're sneaky enough to get away and that you are not going to stand and fight if you're going to die as well. And you can fly the ship, so please just, if you could, save my memory core and install it to a new droid. It doesn't even have to be a particularly good droid. Just something that can utilize my memory core. If it's, I mean, if it is salvageable, then I can at least do what I can. That's the definitive answer that I was looking for. Thank you. I will try to do the same for you if you were to be this method. Appreciate it. Uh, yeah, really, I haven't had to think about that before. Okay. But that's all I had. Is this anything that you want to talk to me about? Or is this just, just me to you? Uh, I mean, I have some questions about what your deal is with Granny and that weird language you use sometimes, but figure that's... Shoot. We get to, all we have is time until we die, so... Okay, so what's with that? I, I mean, not to snoop in on conversations, but let's deal. I have an original programming and a secondary programming. The original programming weighs far heavier on my actions. Uh, Umbrun programmed me secondarily to be a, a best friend to Harry if he were to die or I guess in this case abandon all of us who cared about him. Uh, he, he had his priorities. But my primary motivations are a bit more esoteric. Uh, I met a woman in a very special place that felt a great disturbance in the Force. At some point, apparently, many of the Force users of the galaxy were exterminated, and she wanted me to keep tabs on those that are left. I somehow came across three of them. Wait, three? Yes, three. Granny, Alo, right. Right. and Alo's new friend, which I definitely remember her name because it's in my memory banks. Ah, right. Yeah, that's three. I thought you were talking about three on the ship. Oh. 
They are all on the ship, yes. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I could go into more specific terms, but I feel like I'd be boring you. Well, I can't say my programming was more interesting than that, so. You're program <clears throat> You're programmed to be a damn good pilot. Damn right. Okay, bye. And I leave. Why is everybody putting their hopes for after their death onto me? This is stressful. <laughs> Alright, anybody else have anything they want to do, people they want to talk to, things all that nature? I mean, I would... Yeah, I'm Sam good. got number two? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would stop in with, um, with the, uh, the other forest users uh, one at a time. Okay, who do you want to go to first? Mostly, I, I will go to uh, Ayla's quarters. Yeah, you uh, you roll up and you give a knock once again. Um, you just kind of hear it coming from the other side of it. Uh, just <sighs> what do you want? And it's very clearly Vexa's voice, not Alo. <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> it's me, H four N K. She uh, opens the door and you just see her. She's very much still kind of bent over. Um, A lot of damage was done to what was keeping her alive. Um, She looks very wounded as she's kind of looking down at you. She's like, what do you want, droid? I came to see how you're doing. Shit. Yeah, you look like shit. Uh, yeah, getting stabbed will do that. <laughs> and having your organs ripped out. Anyway, what? I'm Is sure you can replace those. Can I ask you about your uh, boss? Neuro, is it? Neuro. <laughs> what questions do you have? How strong is he in the force? Do you think I would serve somebody weak? Absolutely not. Uh, He's very strong. Uh, (laughs) Would you say that he is more powerful than three force users? There are three force users who could attack him and fail. (laughs) Three that could attack and succeed. Depends on who it is that he's dealing with. Let's say for argument's sake, you, Alo, and Granny. (sighs) Unlikely that we would win in a fight. Does he take on droids as allies? He takes on droids as property. I certainly wouldn't say he considers anything inanimate to be an ally. Is there anything I can do to help repair her, like, life-saving equipment that she's using? Or, I mean, it's not really my primary motivate or primary function at all, but... Do you have any kind of tools to uh, do repair work? I mean, I have tools to repair my own astromech stuff, which is probably not the same stuff, but... It it might work. (laughs) That's a nine. Solid nine. You spend like a half hour or so, like kind of like trying to do some little fine attune operations, but um, you start to realize that it's more of a cybernetics thing than a droid thing. And you just, you're just not quite equipped with the right tools to be able to fix what, I mean, she was already not in great shape. Like it was already kind of a, a painful struggle she was going through before Alo stabbed her. So, you know, not doing a, it would take a lot of work and probably some replacement parts at this point to get her back up to whatever good is for her now. Okay, well, I tried and I failed. I hope you survive. I've been through (laughs) worse. 
I guess I'll just say, take it easy. I'm assuming you're not coming on to the station with us. I have no interest, and even if I did, I'm sure I would just be a liability. Well, just so you know, when I hit you a bunch, it was nothing personal. I won't hold it against you for sucker punching me out of the shadows. I mean, we're friends now, so I would never do that again. We are definitely not. Anyways, bye. Before you can finish that. (laughs) She gets about halfway (laughs) through the word friends before the door closes. (laughs) You're not quite sure what she ended with. but (laughs) I mean, I could easily. (laughs) You saw Alo just like huddled in the corner, sleeping, like facing the wall. (laughs) I'd like to go talk to start with Harry. Okay. Uh, knock knock. You um, you decent? No, but come on in. I'll walk in and just look. And it, you aren't lying. All right. Um. <clears throat> well, I just figured, you know, we've been through a lot, and um, I dare say I feel like I've um known you the longest of this crew. So, so I don't know. I just feel like there's something. <clears throat> feel it. Like there's something needs to be said, or you could not say it, and we just know what it means. No, it's got to be said. Uh, you, it, 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 does it really have to? Like, you don't have to say it. You but. need to start washing between your toes. It oh is my God. How disgusting dare you. smelling. It is rancid. It's like if you left cheese out on the table and a bunch of womp rats came out and started nibbling it and died and then, you know, pooped out the cheese... And then that started to grow mold, and then more rats came out to eat that and also died. And then vomited somehow in death all over the old womp rats. And I think maybe, maybe that's somewhere close to what it smells like. I mean, that's what gives me the most grip when I'm climbing, though. Ah. Uh. Uh, I, no, I, I can't if that. I if I wash mm. that I have no grip and I can just slip and fall and die you want me to die how dare that's you that's what you use your hands for mate no all my power comes from my foot my one foot ah Ugh. you didn't have to open the toes there I get the point okay alright mm. huh. you, can, you can still smell as he looks closer, where's your nose? Of course I can still smell. But it's like think? nothing's there. I mean, the holes are still there. He's going to try to poke both of the holes with his fingers. You do it and he tries to slap oh. him out of the way. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know. But, <clears throat> I mean, like I said, it's, it's, it's for the grip, man. You don't know. You don't know until you know. Hey, maybe you should. You Actually, why do your legs go paralyzed when it hits water? What's wrong with that? What? Why? Why? Well, it happened that one time. Because uh, yeah, we're literally time. underwater. You see this? And he slaps all the wires that are exposed at the joint. Why not cover you it? You want to try to shield all that? You want to try to figure out how to balance mobility and and durability and and I don't know all these stinking wires here replacing all the muscle and bone and and blood here. vessels and okay try this as he goes for his foot he grabs all the mold and just slaps it on his leg. If you had any organic stuff still left in that part of your body, you'd be concerned about infection. But <laughs> fortunately, it's all just wires. It might corrode some of the stuff in there eventually, but you figure it's fine for now. Still How do gross, you think I did? But fine. 
It's great, right? Well, now you- I really came in here to tell you that um, I'm probably gonna, you know, look to you for any kind of strategic advantages, but um, turns out came here, got something totally didn't expect. Yes, me, on you. Now we're like one. I feel like a bit used in me at this point. It's not a he big kind of rattle, rattles his leg around. Some of the harder parts of the toe crud just go tink, 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 tink. Don't worry. I'll take good care of you, Drod. Well, this time you figured out a way to get inside me. All right. Um, Drod icks on you. Look, mate, I, I don't know what's going to happen here, but. We'll be fine. Stop your worrying. You yeah, my back. I'm a little less worried. I mean, more, more than more than likely I'll be at your front, but okay. Well, unless we're surrounded, in which case we're both at each other's backs. So, you know, there's... We got yeah, options probably, the front, the back, back to back, back to front. Um, yeah, I'd probably be running up in there while you're just sitting back, so... Ass to mouth, butt to trout, you know. Um... Isn't that like incest? No, that would be incense. Oh, that that particular it. situation would be quite incensing to me. Um, I gotta know go these things before. You know what? Here, I'm gonna help you out, and he's gonna go to Harry's terminal and just load up the uh, Encyclopedia Galactica. <laughs> It's there. <laughs> yep. uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's a I, whole world of things you've never heard of before. I will not read one word of that, but thank you. Well, guess what? And it'll press a button <laughs> and it'll say Ardvark. <laughs> yep, he breaks it. Enjoy the audiobook <laughs> and he just walks out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you very quickly shut it down as soon as Dread even takes his hands away. <laughs> but you heard one word, and that cannot be undone. Oh, God. Uh, what is Ardvark? You just hear from Harry's room, What is Ardvark? <laughs> <laughs> you may never know. Uh, okay, I, anybody else got something I, they would like to do? Like to go talk to Hunky. All right. Bonjour. So, that assessment you had of me earlier. Me? Yeah. What, what are your predilections on that? I have no predilections of my own. Only those that Umbrun has given me. Are you saying that you're, you don't, you're not possibly capable of changing your opinion on people? Oh, no, I am. Very much so. I just figured I wanted to know if that um, that whole unhinged business was still on your mind or not. It seems that you are always preoccupied with some things that is not immediate. Some things that is uh, somewhere else. Of course, now that you're preoccupied with it so much, it now has become the primary focus for you. However, I think the rest of us are focused on killing Harry and uh, perhaps saving the galaxy from some sort of infections that would break out virally. Virally. You gotta throw that R. You gotta throw that R in the back of the throat. <laughs> and throw a lot of things back there, but not an R. How about the D? I'm not here somebody to change your mind. No. I'm not here to change your mind. I just wanted to know if. It did change. Uh, hey, being preoccupied with something important to you is not a bad thing. I am often preoccupied with uh, programming that I have from somewhere before Umbrin. But I can put that aside to get things done sometimes, most of the time. And I believe you are capable of doing that as well, but sometimes not so much. Sometimes you fall prey to your more emotional side. Yeah, I get that. It makes sense. So, but being well, um, 
not really fully organic anymore, but you talk to Alo as he um as he do. He is uh unconscious, as we say. Uh, hmm. perhaps he will not wake up for another week. Or it's a long time. He seems very tired. Is that um uh, stevia? St- oh, uh, Exa. Yes, we are friends now. I know her name. Oh yeah, she seems like she'd be pretty useful in a fight if she's at you know top notch. How's um how's that looking like? It's going to work out. He is not doing well. She is having problems breathing. I suppose she was already having problems breathing, but she got stabbed today, so. It is understandable. Why? I mean, perhaps you could, um, I don't know, can you... Can parts of you, like a lung, be used in other parts of people? Oh, Arthur, I've had a question for you. Do you have a memory core? I mean, I've got the big pink squishy up here. But, um... See, I think there's a miscommunication. Umber and program me to say to think a big pink squishy is something else. You know what? Maybe I'll go see if I can help her. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Bonjour! Okay, so you go off to Huntail? (laughs) Yeah. She's in in the room that she wouldn't presume to call it her room, but she's in the empty room that she is, that she claimed for the time being. I know you're in his state of um, dealing with your own shit and stuff, but I figured maybe a project could help take your mind off things till we get to um, the corona. Okay. I mean, you're you're pretty good at fixing people up. I'm pretty good at fixing machines, and we got a person over there who's half person, half machine, some combination of that. And I was wondering if you would mind assisting me in trying to get her back. Um, I mean, you know, kind of getting her fighting fit at the same time, maybe making things a little more comfortable for her. I mean, she is a friend of the that crew. really mean looking so. one that Halo brought back with him. Yeah, well, maybe she's only mean because, you know, it hurts to breathe every time something Probably not. Possibly. Either way, yes, I'll see what I can do to help. Great. And she'll follow you along to go, uh, try to help out. Um, Vexa will answer. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's like, hmm. what is with all of you and trying to <coughs> fix me? Well, I mean, you know, that pink squishy mm. seems to like you, so... <laughs> yeah I suppose so fine I'm sure you're not going to make it worse than that droid tried to do to me mm-hmm. she'll uh she'll like lay down and kind of just like yeah. lay in a spot where you can go ahead and try yeah um All right. if you have tools that are relevant then sure I otherwise have I guess a it's cyber- like a medicine I have a Cybertex implement, or I have a Tinker's kit. Yeah, with with Huntail's help. Um, yeah, go ahead and do yeah Cybertech. Um, yeah, with advantage for the help. So that's a twenty-four. Hmm. Yeah, you uh, you two spend significantly longer than uh, H4 did trying to do some repairs, um, and it looks like you actually get her to the point where. Um, it's about she's about in as good a shape as she could be um but especially as you're both kind of going through she goes unconscious at some point during the process um and you notice that multiple of these parts don't look like they were damaged they just look like they were faulty when they were installed i i would realistically have some spare parts floating around for self-repair on this ship i imagine yeah, you probably have some. You could swap out some of it, but a couple, there's a couple pieces that are 
strange. You don't feel like you've seen some of these, some of these specific parts that look like important connectors. Um, but you could replace the rest of the faulty bits. Right. And then at least when she comes back to, she's not breathing nearly, her breathing is nowhere near as labored as it was before. Um, you still okay. see her kind of wince every now and then, but for the most part, she seems in good shape. Good. Good, that's... I, uh, Instead of me going, <sighs> it's just... <sighs> Oh my god, that's so much better. It's just a creepy guy instead of pain. (laughs) Thank you for that. Problems. Sometimes it helps to have somebody who knows what they're looking at. Right tool for the job, I guess. Not everybody in the world's out to hurt you. Most of them are, though. Oh, no, no argument here. Is there anything I can do for you, or...? I mean, if you feel willing to, you know, assist us in any way, not put yourself in harm's way, but you got that thing that that he's got. You got that whole mystical voodoo, hooju, whatever. And if there's any bit of that you're willing to volunteer to the cause, we would be most grateful. But, um... Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> At advantage, because you've made her significantly less in pain than she was before. Okay, still. Gonna be a fate point, please. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <He's> one. <laughs> Brings you down to seven. Uh, oh, that's so much better. 15 instead of a nine. <sighs> I'm not charging in there to fight whatever you're off to go fight. But if there's anything I can do to help, I'll I'll try my best. Much obliged. Seems only fair. At least some form of payment for what you've done. I used to believe in karma. And, um... I don't know, everything felt better then. Galaxy's not gonna throw something back at you just because you did something wrong the people that you've wronged survived then they'll do something back to you in return for it but yeah the force is out there sure but it's not been how it works in my experience at least but you go on believing whatever cute little thing you want to believe uh, it's okay and she'll give you a nod uh, and uh, wait till you both leave her room and close the door behind you I kind of see if Huntail is feeling a little better after this or not. She looks Just a little cheerier. Not physically. Oh, she good. looks a l- she at least visibly she she has like a little bit more of a happy look on her face. Not full on smiling or anything, but at least like a more positive seeming vibe and energy coming off her. Uh, I'm uh, I'm needed elsewhere, but thank you. I see what you're doing. Thank you for it. I appreciate it. Anytime. I mean, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he just sort of wanders off oh, coyly. Yeah, she'll give you like, kind of like, half give you like a little bit of a gentle shove as you go and she'll walk away. Oh, come much and come much and come much. Um, <laughs> go over to R5. All right, you go to R5. Uh, did you say I had a metal brain? You little turd. What? No, I said it's probably organic. Oh, all right. Yeah. Who? I'll retract the little turd statement. Um. Duly noted. Uh, you got duly. any death sticks? I have not had death sticks since I had a left arm. Yeah, it was worth a shot. Were you just here to yell at me, or was there something else you wanted? I don't know. I, know I still got that, uh recording on course and everything yep we're at least we're heading in the right direction you know our father I think we've known each other the longest I thought we knew each other the longest <laughs> <laughs> gotta say it's uh, it's been a good run let's hope we can keep it up little boy they'll pat him on the dome just be 
We'll talk about a salary after we get out of this. And he'll walk out of the cockpit. <laughs> you see R5, like the lights just shine a little bit brighter. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, H4, you did say you wanted to talk to the Force users. Did you want to talk to Granny as well? or uh... Definitely did want to talk to Granny. All right. <clears throat> You can do that now if you want. Uh, I go to a room and, uh, you know, no, I can't wait to be let in because I'm respectful. Granny's going to open the door. Hello, Granny. It is me, your favorite, H4. Who are you? Come come closer. Oh, wait, I can't see. Uh, who are you? My name is H4. I have been your favorite droid and best friend for at least... Two days? I just thought I should uh, come speak with you before we go into certain certain possible deaths. Uh, We're going into certain death? C- certain possible death? Well, aren't you always in certain possible death? Yeah. She was right. Well, the percentage is much higher here. Where we are going. Where are we going? We are going to the Ice and Corona. Uh, It is a place where we can cure areas uh, quite ill, as well as um, someone else on the ship. And we are going to see if we can get a cure for them, as well as stop uh, the Empire from using this disease to spread across the galaxy. And probably kill a lot of people. Why would they want to do that? Because the Empire are dicks. So they're just going to spread a disease around for fun? I mean, these are the people paying them taxes, right? Um, I do not know that part, but I believe their, uh, boss, Moff Differens, is, uh, somewhat of a zealot. Attempting to cleanse the galaxy of, I suppose, people who are, can get infected by this disease. I don't know. His oh. motivations are a bit muddy to me, but I think he's a bad guy and we should kill him. Why are we doing... Why is no one else doing this? This seems important. Why is it only us? Then, uh, I suppose there are people trying to stop him in different ways. But uh, we are the ones with the information, and we are the ones capable of getting there in time to stop him. If we were trying to marshal forces, we might be too late. You're right, we're definitely gonna die. Possibly. I wanted to ask you something. You remind me of a person. Where did you say you are from? Oh, uh, 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 what, what, the, what the hell was that planet called? Uh... uh. This isn't Granny being confused. This is me not remembering what the <laughs> whole planet is. Something with an A. It's something with an A. I, I don't, don't see why not both. <laughs> it's both. Little of column A, so, little of column B. Something with an A. Alderaan? <laughs> no. <laughs> Atuine? <laughs> Abu? Okay, I need to look it up. Uh, <laughs> Ard- is it like... Ard- is it the home? Is it the homeworld for her species, Jack? Yeah, uh, it's Alpharides. Thank you. That that Al- Alpharides is where I'm from. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not where I thought. Uh, have you ever been to? All right, he, he swivels his head like 360 around the room to make sure nobody else is in there. <laughs> Have you ever been to the set of the Force? The what? The center of the Force. It's a wellspring. Have you ever been there? I don't think so. Yet again. I am wrong again. You seem to have such a big, strong aura of midichlorians. I thought perhaps you only a similar mission as to me. What mission are you on? Just keeping track of Force users that are remaining. 
You seem to be the most powerful ones that I've met. I can use the force? Where did that happen? Probably not very long ago. You are very young. Oh. Who are you? You can call me... A0TN. That is my designation. Who are you? Everyone else will call me Hunk. Oh, hi, Hunk. Thank you. This is exactly what I wanted. I have to say, when we go in there, I will do my best to keep you alive. But I am not uh, as strong as Monsoor in your bottom. I'm sure you're very useful, Hunk. You're my new favorite droid. Thank you. It fills my carburetor with warmth. To hear you say that. I don't know, that's a word. It could be right. It <laughs> probably isn't. <laughs> with warmth? Uh, I think you said warmth. <laughs> warmth. Oh, warmth. They said warmth. Hey, just... I, I was really more I I the carburetor <laughs> part. <laughs> the carburetor heard... part is really the more questionable. I thought I heard <laughs> lumps, and I was like, why would you want lumps in your carburetor? That sounds very bad. <laughs> I don't even know what a carburetor does. I don't know why it's inside of a droid. I don't think Umber knew why he put it in there, but it's there. It's definitely there. That sounds right, like he would install it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A carburetor is a device that mixes air and fuel for internal combustion engines. <laughs> yeah, they really wouldn't so, need that. <laughs> I have an internal combustion engine somehow. Um, <laughs> Mostly just makes fart noises. Oh my god, you guys, this droid is explosive. <laughs> <laughs> With energy. hey oh, But only internally. <laughs> At eight. Um, well, I just wanted to see if perhaps you knew my oldest friend, and if you were part of uh, your mission, but apparently not. You know, I'm looking out for you. There's a pecking order. You, Halo, Vexa, and the rest. I don't know any of those names, but I, I thank you for putting me at the top. Oh, I had one more question. Just in case you wanted to get something off your chest. Who is Jonathan? Oh, you know Jonathan. Oh, I didn't know you were one of his friends. Yes, I'm his oh. best friend. Tell me everything you know about him. Oh, Jonathan's my grandson. Mm. Actually, it doesn't tell me anything I didn't know. And we can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go I assume they were getting nothing out of that, but that was. <laughs> you got something out of it. <laughs> I also love that H4 knows two words in French. One of them he uses incorrectly, trying both for hello and goodbye. And the other one is the French <laughs> word for shit. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> On. There was a scream from the other room. I have to go. I have to go check it out. <laughs> Investigate. Okay, that's actually probably a good time for bathroom break, um, uh, and then we can go and drop out of hyperspace. Uh, now that everybody's had their time to go and do their little talks, uh, and um, you've all taken a long rest and all that good stuff, um, the rest of the time while you're traveling through hyperspace uh, passes by mostly peacefully, and uh, you drop out of hyperspace into the Isen Star system. Uh, the station is far too close to the actual ice and star for you to have exited hyperspace like in the immediate vicinity of it. So you're going to take a little bit of extra time traveling at sublight speeds uh, to reach your destination. The intensity of the star's brightness continues to increase the deeper into the system you go and the closer you get to the source of the light. Eventually it actually gets so bright when you're getting this close to the star that you have to raise up the cockpit's blast shields so that way anybody that still has organic eyes or even the electronic sensors um, that most like droids are equipped with would get fried uh, just from how intense the brightness is. The interior of the ship also begins to heat up to an uncomfortable temperature, but you would figure that you'll be fine as long as you don't really go any closer than where the coordinates of the station are to the actual star. Um, and before long, 
the uh, sis- the ship's navigation systems indicate that you are getting close. Um, but you can't do anything based off of visuals. It's just off of uh, all of your targeting systems and navigational equipment. Uh, but fortunately, it's pretty accurate, even with the uh, solar interference. Um, how do you all want to proceed now that you're getting close? Should probably try to go in with stealth, I'd imagine. All right, go ahead and give me a hide check as you uh, using the ship stats. Yeah, can we stealth while we're in bright light? Yes. <laughs> in this particular instance, yes. Wow. <laughs> oh. uh, it it uh, rolled an advantage. Hang on, let me. Oh, those are just very just, just, just when just Jack claim remember the fake no, point. We take, take, take the fake point away. Right. Yep. Uh, oh, re- oh, so uh, no. if you're good with the if you're good with the three, ah. then you get a three. Otherwise, you can re-roll it. Um, also, I think you're actually no. Never mind. Your stealth um, uh, device gives you advantage on hide checks, so that's fine. Oh, um, sweet. That's like, oh. the point of the stealth device that you had installed was to give you advantage. That works out. Um, okay. So you get. A, oh my god! There was a reason. Then? There was so a that is a <laughs> that is a total of twenty two, and that came in clutch. Very nice. Um, all right, cool. So yeah, you're able to uh, start flying in, um, seemingly undetected. Uh, as you get close, uh, you start to detect a moderately sized uh, space station uh, orbiting around this star, um, and you can even start to pick up indications that there are other smaller ships. Um, most of them smaller than you, uh, flying in the vicinity. Uh, yeah. How do you want to, uh, approach once you get up there and like, do you want to just go straight for it? Do you want to scout around? What's the, what's the plan? We're the only ones here or we, there's no way we're the only ones here. The, your scanners just at a glance indicate there are other ships moving around in the area. Do we want to try to avoid those or do we want to see if we can get the jump on one of them? How many are there? Uh, go ahead and give me a scan check. And not to be a bummer, but we have disadvantage on scan checks while our stealth device is operating. Bummer. Yep, it masks uh, detection both directions. Yeah, technician. You're the technician, right, Paul? That sounds right. Yeah, I'm the operator. I want to say it's, I think it's the operator who controls the sensors. Operator, how may I direct your call? Yeah, scan check, please. Natural, that's a five. Natural one. Uh, more than one, less than ten. Yeah. Okay. Let's not engage. Let's uh, let's look around. Maybe find a better spot away from every all these ships. If anything, let me just go straight for the. Yeah, I was going to say, do we see the Go station? straight for the coordinates. Yeah, you can see the station on your uh, scanners. Um, the ships are kind of flying in somewhat of a p- patrol uh, formation on the dark side of the station. Like, the side that's opposite from where the star is of the station. I'll say we see if we can sneak our way in. Sneak our way back out. Nobody will even know we saved the galaxy. Go ahead and give me a uh, probe check, actually, as you're trying to, like, scan the specific station itself and finding whatever way in there that is. That never works. Oh, that's better. 18. Much better. Um, so, yeah, as you're starting to try to pinpoint specifically where actual entry points are on the station, um, you see that there are no other... Uh, there are no, like, dock ports or anything like that on the... Um, the bright side of the station. Uh, And it's at that point that you see that the kind of weird shape that juts off on the shadowy side is actually um, another ship that is currently docked at the port right there. And it's very much an Imperial light cruiser that is currently docked with the station. Is that butt plug doing against the station? I guess I can actually just go ahead and show you what it looks like over there. There you go. Oh, it is a butt plug. Yeah. So there's a there's an Imperial light cruiser right there. Um, Have we been over this? Dot dot an Imperial light cruiser docked with the station, and um, you can see that there are a few Tie Fighters 
uh, flying around in a patrol formation right now, but none seem to have um, noticed your presence. Uh, and everything actually has this kind of weird yellow glow um, to it from just the proximity to the star. And the star is very much off on the east side, far side of the space station right there. Where's the is the hang, where's the hangar entrance on this ship? It's on the uh, side that's facing away. Um, their docking port is on the port side, um, funny enough. And then okay. the hangar is on the starboard side. So if we run through the options real quick, we can try and sneak. There's only one port and they're using it. We can try and sneak and uh, shoot their ship, but that will destroy it. That may harm the port so we couldn't get in. Oh, we can dock inside their ship, try and make our way through their ship into the into the uh, station, and then get out unnoticed. Unlikely. Okay, thank you for clarifying. I feel like we need to, if there was a person, let's say there was a wall over there that was, you know, of these three, that would be the force wall. That person on the other side would not know what we're looking at. In this oh, and hear me out. Lynn. Yes. Whatever there is in, on that space station, do you think it would survive the void of space? Depends on what kind of container it's being stored in, I suppose. If we blew up the space station, basically. Most, or, most living organic things are not capable of surviving in the vacuum of space. So, yes, I believe that probably most things would die. Maybe a bit of a suicide mission, but I feel like most of our strategies are. We could commandeer that light cruiser and return to Cinder. We're commandeering the light cruiser. Couldn't we do something more effective with it other than blow up the station? I mean, if we steal an, an Imperial light cruiser, that would be fun as hell to pilot, but that's not going to last forever. Imperial Empire is going to figure it out pretty quick. Don't we need to be in the actual space station thing? Only if we need whatever's in the space station. If they got the intel, if they've got the files, right, that they need, they probably uploaded them to the ship's computer for safekeeping. Yeah. I they don't need more than know. files. Perhaps they need uh, equipment, organisms. Bacteria, something of that nature. They may need more than just files. We don't know. Dread, could you take a look at this? I was digging through this part of the research and I'm not as familiar with particular aspects of this kind of thing when it's not relating to medical things. Um, and she'll kind of pass the data pad she's been looking at. Um, so there was some other poor registry and just kind of general cataloging of things. Uh, she'll hand uh, you the data pad, kind of hoping for you to take a closer look at what she's got open. Uh, and he'll, yeah, he'll take a quick glance. Yeah. He'll, he'll technology dig check, into please. it. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, technology check, huh? if and you will. So that's a 25. Sorry, plus an eight, so that's a 25. Yeah, so as you start skimming through, um, you start seeing a bit more of like what probably it is that the Imperials were actually interested in, in terms of um, what was on Camino, uh, And it seems like there was some kind of like hard-coded key um, into, in the stuff that they would have transferred um, that they would actually need to bring onto the station. A uh, decent chance that whatever they've got, they just brought it with them going in, in order to access whatever's locked away in there. Some amount of us is going to have to intercept on that light like, cruiser, make sure they don't send any distress signals. Um, <clears throat> just to make sure that we don't have a bunch of TIE fighters on our tail. You think we can sneak on to the ship? If we can dock in the hangar bay without attracting the TIE fighters' attention, we have a decent chance of taking this ship. I'll just say R5 is a pilot. 
you would know there is a 0% chance you're flying a ship into another ship's docking bay without being noticed by at least somebody on that ship. Are you saying the size of a submarine? Like, probably even smaller than that, maybe? <laughs> Do you have escape pods if you want to try to launch an escape pod at it and try to hit the inside of that hangar? Oh, that sounds fun. It does sound fun. It's a, it sounds almost as fun as just jumping out into space <laughs> and directly towards their hangar. <laughs> These are all I mean, bad ideas. Maybe we just killed the TIE pod. Fighters. Do we, we have, have like, any, any, any do you have space escape suits on here? I know Umbran had one in his quarters. I don't... <laughs> I didn't think about taking it, so I'm guessing Umbran didn't think about taking it. <laughs> so, by the way, your escape pods can fit exactly one person um, inside of them. <laughs> Shoot me in there with the escape pod. It'll be fun. I mean, it'll, it'll work. I cannot allow you to do that. It is death. It is death. It's death? Yes, you heard me. All right. You want me to talk in Wookiee? Okay, I'll talk in Wookiee. That's death, bro. That uh, is death. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, what isn't death? I mean, technically, I'm already dying, right? Yeah, but aren't we doing this to prevent that from happening? I mean, there is also somebody else that's infected that would benefit. Uh, do they have a tracking a tracking being, a tractor being? It's an Imperial Art Cruiser. I feel like they would have one. Uh, perhaps, maybe. Can you um, perform a feat of piloting that seems like we are being brought in by the tractor beam? And therefore, the TIE fighters do not need to attack us. All they would need to, all they would need to do is check in with whoever's on the cruiser and say, "Oh, we're not. Our tractor beam's off right now. That ship's just flying really slowly." It's also possible that they might just try to use their tractor beam on the ship. Right, but then we get what we want, and they just pull us in, and we're there. And immediately taken prisoner. Not if we stow ourselves in the smuggling compartments. Nobody checks the smuggling compartments. Known fact. Huntail's eyes couldn't roll further back in her head as you're all talking about how nobody checks the smuggling compartments. (laughs) I do have a feeling that a certain member of the (laughs) this is a party it's coughing it'll give us away granny if somebody were to say you know if you could sense that somebody was about to check the smuggling compartments could you woo them into not wanting to do that if there was only one of them probably but if there's like a bunch of them but no, I can't go woo on a bunch of people all at the same time. Hmm. Could you convince the one that's in charge of them, though? Probably, if I knew who was in charge. How many people do we think are left on the, like, cruiser? How many do you think are on the station? Perhaps they didn't... Perhaps they didn't leave too many on the, like, cruiser. But, uh, we shouldn't count on that. How many people does that light cruiser hold? I know that. Uh, go ahead and give me, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of intelligence check that makes sense while I look at the answer to that question. <laughs> uh, lore? Lore? Probably not lore, but sure. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, I don't see I'll, anything I'll that just... fits better. Yeah, look, let's go I'll take more. a straight uh, intelligence more. check if you think that's more appropriate here. I don't really have a good answer for what it is. So basically, if you got an intelligence proficiency that doesn't sound outright wrong, the okay. lore works. Lore works. Technology right. works. I don't know. Lore is kind of it. Uh, the same thing. Oh, that's a well, that's a dirty twenty. I mean, just looking at the shape of the ship, it's probably exactly sixty-nine people. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Uh, Why would you need 69 people for a butt plug? That doesn't make any sense. A butt plug of that size, you would need 69 people to get it in there. That's true. That's just science. (laughs) That's just science. (laughs) It is considered a large size ship, and the minimum crew required to operate a large size ship is 200. Yeah. And that's that's in flight, or that's... uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. That's minimum that you need for the ship to be operational. 
All right. So I, the way I see it, we have one of two options. First option, we fight our way through and still alert them um, to our presence, I guess. Second option, maybe we all just roll into the, you know, smuggling station. Everybody hides and we just have X2 literally fly piloting and saying, oh, no, I lost my way. But I need fuel. Can you guys spare some? It's great because it's not even a lie because we are almost out of fuel and I have no idea where we are. Wait, how are we getting out of here? Oh, you think we are getting out of here? <laughs> what happened to the plan of launching Harry in an escape pod? I mean, I'm still for that plan. I like that plan a lot. We Sounds decided exciting. that would lean heavier towards the. Um, we decided Yo, dude, that would lean death. heavier towards a certain <laughs> death uh, scenario than most of the other plans. I was told that that's death, bro. We're trying to infiltrate an Imperial space station with hundreds of people. I don't. That seems about as likely to survive that as him getting launched through space. Monsieur Dredd, is it possible these things that you can um, contact your friend more friends and perhaps he will want to take us aboard the ship alive? Is that a plan that even makes sense? There's pretty much a 50-50 chance that he wants to kill me himself and make sure I die this time. Or that he just says blow that ship out of the sky. I, I, I'm, I've got a very loose grip on what part of the stratosphere, atmosphere, whatever we are in here. I mean, we're in the corona, I suppose. Just say up. Blow us up. Um. Well, wait, which way is up? We're in space. How about to pieces, maybe? Smithereens? That's probably, yeah. Ooh, that's a good word. Smithereens. Smithereens. Flinders. I like the word Flinders. Send them to Kingdom Go Away. So 50-50 is uh, honestly better than most of our options. Uh, Yeah, you could go on there and then try and um, somehow kill everyone in the docking bay and bring us in. You might have to, like, walk me through, well... Find someone that can operate the thing and choke them. Until they do it. All right, we want to do this. We want to do everything that we want to get accomplished. Here's how we get about it. Our radio, the light cruiser, and let them know that Droidix on you has come to bargain. While they're readying the welcome wagon, we launch Harry. Oh, good lord, I can't see <laughs> We launch Harry <laughs> in an escape pod. <laughs> Hopefully, in such a manner that nobody sees us doing it. Good lord, I don't know how this is going to work. This is my Somehow, he makes heard. it onto the light cruiser. <laughs> I'm not responsible for that part of the plan. I cannot be. I could not take it seriously enough. It's a hundred percent success okay. rate. <clears throat> You're actually we got this. Somehow he makes it onto the ship unarmed. Here. Hold on, I need to look at all the toolkits. Hold on. <laughs> okay. Through <laughs> infantry. Yeah, we would send him armed. And artillery would we like, And he clears out. I don't know. The loading bay is something. I, I, I'm going to be honest, Harry. I don't think the launching you into the escape pod plan is going to work. We'll say the... 100% we'll, we'll success rate. 100% success rate. I think it, it's not that part of the plan on its own that I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about that part of the plan as a factor I in God the grand something scheme. To say. Okay, 99.99% <laughs> success rate. I just want R5 to give me an intelligence check real quick. <laughs> R5, be intelligent, goddammit. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> okay, that's a seven. <laughs> Use a fate point. Use a fate point. Use a uh, I mean, you could. 
You I can. will. I will. We we have plenty of those to play around with. Um, okay. Hey. That's better. Okay. That's that's better. That is a sixteen. Okay. Everybody's talking all these things about what are you doing with the with the escape pod? Where is it even going? I mean, if you're flying into the hangar, how can you secretly launch an escape pod in there? <laughs> that would just be madness. Wait a minute. There are some parts <laughs> from the Mayday that we could modify and attach to the outside of an escape pod. And then it would start to burrow a hole in the side of the light cruiser. And then he could exit through the hole in the side of the light cruiser. <laughs> it could be done. I don't By know what's going to happen to him. actually work. But it could I mean, be done. Yeah, I don't care. I, I want, We're relying I want that on... option right now. Okay, That's the option. relying on Harry not being okay. immediately incapacitated or worse. Hunk. But it's possible. I, I can hold my I breath for a very long him. time. I That's not the part I'm worried about. Oh, further real quick. You actually also have enough parts where you could modify three of the escape pods to be able to do that. <laughs> Oh dear! I have a re pl refined plan based on um, everything that has been said. Zrods, you, um, we don't break stealth. Uh, we don't break our hiding position. You call saying you want to turn yourself in. You've been infected, and you think that perhaps uh, the answers aboard something something that would get your friend's attention. The rest of us hide in the smuggling compartments. And then when they come to arrest you, which you are the pilot in this instance, or presumed, then we jump out and kill them. No, I like the other plan. Shoot me through space. I mean, this guy did drop a spaceship on you just to try to get you get rid of you once. I was about to say, I've been through a lot worse. Maybe I can get him talking, bragging monologuing or whatever. Maybe you can say they did not find everything on Camino, and you have more information since they don't have with their project. They will need you alive at that point. Absolutely True. need you. Um, perhaps our friend here may have useful information for Morph. Out of friends. the question. Who text this conversation earlier? Oh, no, wait. That, damn it. That's French again. <laughs> that's not how binary goes. Binary is not fake French. <laughs> oh, you were so good at keeping it straight up until now, and then all of a sudden it's falling apart. <laughs> yeah, right now is where I really fell apart. Uh, <laughs> I'm happy to risk my own life to best of her, but I'm not putting yep. these in harm's way. Not if I can help it. Oh my god. She's already in harm's way. They're not going to hurt her if they think she has something important to their mission. Same as they're not going to harm you if they think you have something important to their mission. It's merely a matter of mitigating our risks, because if she's on this ship and we get blown up, she's at risk. Let me know when it's escape pod time. I'm going to go see an escape pod, and Harry goes to the escape pod. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... <laughs> It's very crowded. It's, I mean, for lack of a better way of describing it, it's basically a space coffin um, with a small perfect, <laughs> with a little, with like a win just a window over where your face goes. Oh yeah, so you oh, can boy. look out while you're dead. <laughs> it's, the, it's like the guy who buried himself in a coffin with a window so people can see if he was stuck. <laughs> you just see oh boy you just see harry just laying down with his uh vibral battle axe and his bowcaster on his chest <laughs> just crossed, got his weapons crossed over okay we just we just face tape flowers to the front of it they'll just think we're burying somebody at sea <laughs> all right all right of all of us, he was the one most <laughs> human. <laughs> <laughs> oh, five, play the big pups. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> you just see a little harmonica pop out from one of the compartments in R5. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. Good lord. Uh, Drod just takes a long, long breath and then um, H4 makes an interesting point that so long as you might be seen as useful to the Empire, they might actually keep you alive on that ship more um he's positing it's more likely they'd keep you alive if they knew where you were on that ship than if they didn't know you where you were on this one I have no disagreement with the logic that you are using if I called them up and let them know that I'd found something they'd missed would you come with me? Give me a persuasion check. God, I'm missing that advantage right now, but not that much. 17. You see almost kind of a thought kind of cross behind like her black eyes. Just... Yes, I do suppose that I could be of most use in such capacity. I am not useful in a fight, so... Might as well use that which I do have. My my brain. That is the thing I was referring to. That's what I figured. Um, <clears throat> all right, Hunk. I'm going to be trusting you to break us out. Harry is the force to be reckoned with, but I feel like you're going to be the one when it comes to subterfuge in this situation. You and R5. Where is Harry? Well, he's in his... Escape pod. Perhaps, maybe R5 yeah, just dropped his escape pod. Yeah, he's already prepared himself room. for death. It's fine. One, no, once we're, in, once we're in the hangar, just drop the escape pod and tell him we've shot him to, through space. <laughs> yeah, it works. That's fine. <laughs> it works for me. That just would be an insane into a wall distraction. It would be an I insane distraction. It. As soon as we get in, the escape pod drops out and a Wookiee comes and kills everyone. <laughs> they would be not expecting that. Uh, that's the. It sounds like the kind of blaze of glory he's looking for. It's actually um, not um, the worst distraction ever. You know what? I'm a hundred percent with it. I think it might be an <laughs> extra fifty percent. I can see through my coffin there, window. Actually. Yeah, this is. I can assume the escape pod is on the outside, and we are. <laughs> Ari, let me just uh, let me just fix something for you, and he's going to try to activate the blast shield. <laughs> You're gonna reach in and try to do it. I mean, you could just use your uh, whatever tech power you have. That's like the on-off thing. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, he'll just do that. He'll just touch, <laughs> like, touch yeah. uh, circuit, yeah. uh, a couple of circuits together in his head. And... It's already very dark as you're inside of this like space coffin inside of a torpedo tube. And then suddenly what little bit of light there was just closes in front of you. <laughs> and now you're just laying in complete darkness. <laughs> I'm ready to get shot out of this ship. I am ready to get shot out of this ship. I'm just imagining okay. you guys landing in the hangar and then landing in such a way that when you hit eject on the escape pod, it just <laughs> launches back out of the hangar. We never see anything ever again. <laughs> just launching straight into the sun. Now, just that, is, I go. now that is up to the pipe. <laughs> Gets it shoots out, out and then it just the gravity just pulls <laughs> just it back pulls towards it around. the sun. <laughs> oh now, boy. Now that is up to the pilot. I am down for whatever. And that's Harry just going. Duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I'll never know. That's definitely our natural one scenario, I feel like. You put so oh. much faith in our five's hands. Oh no. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. So, oh dear. He's, he's amazing That's the under plan. pressure. This is why we chose That's him as a pilot. Lena and I are bait. Harry's the, dis the diversion. And the rest of you are the rescue wagon. Just real quick, out of character, so I understand. At what point is the <laughs> escape pod being 
launched, I guess. <laughs> Once we've landed, of course. Okay, so the plan is to no, land no. inside the hangar, blast the escape pod into whatever the nearest wall is, <laughs> and then Harry climbs out of it from there. <laughs> That's my okay, plan. Cool. Sam may have a different plan. I mean, Sam may have a different plans. plan. Hang on. There are worse options. We should at least we- wait until they like board the ship and between oh, boarding the yeah, ship. No, absolutely. Between That's boarding the point. ship and handcuffing you, because there's still a chance that they don't have to handcuff. Like if it's a if it's a handful of like guys that we can take. Yeah, out. no. That's a fair point. <clears throat> it should be after they take Lynn and the, me away. And also, we we should probably expect so we should probably expect some death troopers to be involved here. So the less people know what we're doing and what we're planning, <laughs> the better. I feel like the more that we can take people by surprise, the better off we're going to be in this scenario. Agreed. Because all they can do is underestimate us. Uh... Oh! So when is this plan again? Launch it now! (laughs) 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 Um, No, I think we are, I think, almost fully formulated in plan. I Um, mean, it gets mighty cramp in there you know i think i pulled i think i almost got a cramp so you know let me know when to jump back in there and i'll figure it out all right (laughs) do we think that if we launch the escape pod inside the hangar bay that the the force of the launch will kill harry (laughs) before he can get out (laughs) no he'll be fine i mean the like the escape pods are designed to be launched from space go through a planet's atmosphere and crash land on the surface um, and not okay. kill the occupants, so he'll be fine. It's got some insane sci-fi shenanigans that are able to absorb the impact. I mean, could it just, instead of shooting it out, just drop it like it's some kind of malfunction? Could we program could, it to do that? You could do some kind of check to modify its intended programming to do that. Oh my god, that was almost horrible. 27. Yeah, you could you could modify it to launch out at whatever speed you want. You could also set it on a delay to launch at some other time, um, like at a predetermined time when you want it to go off. Um, that's also an option. Could I tie it to my wrist pad, like the launch with the twenty seven command? Yeah. yeah. Okay. How do we how how do we know? Not every everybody's going to be arrested kind of thing. Well, you're going to be in an escape pod that's shielded. Oh, that's right. I should shield all the other ones. So he'll go setting about shielding, <laughs> like doing the blast shield for all the other pods. Also, them all. do you believe that part of the plan was for everyone else to hide in the smuggling compartments, correct? Well, that's They've good. already got what they want, and they're not going to poke about further if they've got that. I don't feel like. lot. You did give me another idea. As you are putting the blast doors on the other pods, perhaps just fire those other ones at full speed at the walls. And then Aries just... Ooh, why not? I can... I mean, I uh, do... Do I have all of them on the wrist pad or just Aries? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can... Yeah, I can just do it whenever I want. I just launch one, launch another, launch another. And then when they don't expect it, I launch the one with Harry. That's when they're like, oh, it's another, it's another faulty pod, just empty, and then out comes an angry wookie. Murder wookie. Yep. Just the layers of planning. God, this is <laughs> going to be the worst plan ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's it's the, it's a, how the best you know, plans work. Considering it's from where we started, I don't see the of this plan. <laughs> considering where we started when I looked at our situation, we actually have a plan versus, you know, <laughs> let's fly into the hangar bay and hope they don't notice us. <laughs> it's, All right, guys. it's definitely a better plan than that. <laughs> I say it's time. Just so you guys know, if I happen to die, R5, you know what to do with my body as he goes into the, the, Wait, the be- pod. Before you get into the pod, H4 will give you a big hug. As he hugs back. <laughs> Droddle Drott will give you back some of your toe jam. No, that's for you. All right. See you on the other side. Which hopefully right. doesn't mean the other other side. It means the no, other side. No, you later, Harry. 
Oh, smell me now. I'd rather not. I think I smell fine. And then he closes the hatch. So is everybody else who all is hiding, I guess. I would hope everybody who is not me and Lynn, but we'll see. All right. So, yeah, I guess everybody um, who is hiding, give me a stealth check at advantage. Utilizing your storage compartments. Uh, Maker, I hope this plan works. Ooh, that was that was a close one. I'm going to give Granny a potent aptitude. So add a D6. Oh, wow. wow. Well, add a D6. Well, not necessary. <laughs> 27. Wow, that was really not necessary. <laughs> it's like the biggest. It's like, well, I got this. You know what? Screw you. I'm only going to take one of your potential six. Get out of here. I, I really have to reevaluate my place in this galaxy. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, R5. You have advantage. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll take that advantage. Uh, that'll that'll be a 22. OK. Uh, yeah, I guess Harry gave me a stealth check, too. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's who I should have given it. Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the worst at stealth. Damn. 22. Damn, boys. Oh, everyone <laughs> rolled a 22 or higher. <laughs> Damn, boys. It's <laughs> incredible. That's insane. Um, okay. I feel like we're going to get shot out of this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but they won't, they won't like, see what they're shooting. Yeah. And they're just like, kill them all. God, I hope you. I mean, I mean, yeah, they're going to say, Drod's here to bargain. And they're like, oh, we want to kill you. Why, why did you. Well, we don't. We don't need anything you have. Why do I hear doom music? Yeah. So I, what, I guess at what distance do you want to um, initiate contact? Do I try to stay out of their effective gun range, or do I try to get so close that they'd have to shoot up their own nose? Yeah, you can try to hail them from just out of their functional range. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to do that, and I will send a hailing signal. All right. Uh, yeah, you receive. Um, and when you just send off the signal, you get just back very quick. It's like, all right, identify yourself. Subject 16. No, I transponded a code. I don't know what subject 16 is. Also known as draw dicks on you. State your purpose. I know something you don't know. <laughs> Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> well, we're, he were I would definitely like to done. Use a fate point. <laughs> they really that. should. They really should have a taunt check. <laughs> they really should. <laughs> they really should. All right. Yeah. Do it. Can I? I'm gonna use a fate point. If yeah. We, I I didn't. Check you got to plenty. See if we had any. You got plenty. You've got plenty. Uh, that's still only a nine. Oof. So, <laughs> after a pause, you just get you hear back over. It's like disengage engines. We're pulling you in. All right, and he will just uh, he will turn off the engines and nothing else. Yeah, and then very almost immediately after, you feel you all feel the ship start to rumble as um, you are grabbed by a tractor beam and you start getting pulled in towards a. Uh, towards the light cruiser. You get about halfway across and you hear um, you hear a different voice coming over the comms. Ah, Drod. I figured that was you floating around out there. Is that you back on Camino as well? Oi. Oh, no use being coy about it. Bits and digging of my own there. Eh? Ah, uh, well, it's far too late for you to meddle with my plans anyway. It's fitting that you see this ending I have prepared for things. And there you have another thrilling session of Starships and Scoundrels. Remember to subscribe and tune back in next week to see what else may happen to the crew of the Mayday. Um, if you don't want to wait quite that long, go ahead and check out the channel because we have tons of other videos about RPGs, board games, video games, movies, pretty much everything nerdy under the sun. Thanks as always for watching and may the force be with you. Good planning, boys. Say, Dave, was, uh... aren't you so happy we figured out a clever way to not have to do a space battle yet?
<laughs> the space battle looks like death to us. Like, you know, I'm sure you, you're looking at the other end of the stats going, it's doable. But we're looking yeah. at, we're looking down in the nose of a light star cruiser going, fuck, 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 well, fuck. We, I have I mean, uh, I, I zero, fuck, this, fuck, I have fuck, zero fuck, problem fuck, fuck. finding an alternate solution <laughs> to a problem being put in front of you. There's nothing wrong with that. We are now in the butt plug. <laughs> <laughs>